Good afternoon you lovely people, welcome back to Lily White Lane, I hope that you're all having a really good Saturday and weekend, wherever you are in the world, and whatever you are planning to get up to today, and over the rest of the weekend as a whole. If you're new here, make sure, if you haven't ready, to smash that subscribe button, hit that like button as hard as you possibly can, give it a rocky bow or a right hook, and tap the notification bell so you'll be notified and let know every single time we upload new piece of Spurs or football content on the channel. Finally, not finally the Rockers come back. Finally, be sure to comment your thoughts and opinions down below on the video and the transfer news we are going to discuss in it. Without further ado, let's get cracking with this knacking and bring to you guys your latest and your greatest Tottenham Hotspur transfer news, rumours and reports. And I want to start things off by talking about Marcus Edwards. There's been multiple reports over the last 24 hours that Tottenham Hotspur are interested in a potential deal for Marcus Edwards. These reports have come out from many reliable journalists and personally, I do not want this deal. I do not want this deal. The signing of Timo Werner was so underwhelming. I really think we need to go out there now and sign an Eze or Elise, a proven Premier League quality winger. Yes, it may cost us 50 to 60 million, maybe north of that, but a player who will make a huge impact in that first team and a huge impact in an attack that's let us down so many times in the previous season. Marcus Edwards, is he going to be that player who makes a major impact? Is he going to be that player who can score a wonder goal out of nowhere occasionally? I don't think he is. I don't think he is. Look, when we saw him in the Champions League against us a couple of seasons ago under Antonio Conte, he looked really, really good. Really good. I think he scored in both legs and he ripped us apart when we went to Lisbon. But you look at his statistics. Last season, four goals, four assists, four yellow cards. Now, judging by that, he's not putting up any treats. And it goes to show why there hasn't been as much talk about him over the last year. The season beforehand, a lot of people were saying, go out there and sign Marcus Edwards. Maybe I was as well. I can't remember. But as I say, four goals... Four assists and four yellow cards. And no disrespect in a league like the Portuguese one. A step up to the Premier League. You know, what's he going to get in the Premier League? I get the argument that he'll have better quality players surrounding him. But it's a huge step up. The Portuguese league, it's not a terrible league. There's much worse leagues in Europe and much worse leagues that have teams qualify for European competitions that get absolutely battered. Like I had it down your local fish and chip shop. Porto, Lisbon, you know... Those aren't those types of teams that get absolutely hammered. And they've got some really good results recently in Champions League games and Europa League games. Porto gave a real good run against Arsenal. Lisbon, as I say, knocked Arsenal out of the Europa League this season before. They love taking Arsenal out of competition, so I love the Portuguese teams. But, as I say, it is a huge step up to the Premier League. And when your stats aren't that great over there, it makes you question what are they going to be like over here. For me... It's a gamble. It could turn out brilliantly. He could be absolutely excellent. The service around him and the, the level could suit him. Or it could go completely tits up. And we've got another season where our options on the wing are nowhere near good enough. Instead, look at Eze Release. First off, Premier League proven players. Premier League proven. They've done it in this league. They're settled in this league. Secondly, ridiculously skillful. That's one thing we're lacking at the minute, someone who can score a goal randomly from outside the box, that real wizard of a player on that wing, or even in the team as a whole, Son was that, but we don't have that sort of player who can have a moment of magic out of nowhere, Eze or Elise would bring that to the team, they've got pace, they beat their man nine times out of ten when they take them on on the wing, and in my opinion their stats are far superior playing for a team that's been mid-table, let's be real, over the last few years when they've been at Crystal Palace in the top league, one of the top leagues in the world, if not the best league in the world. So for me, those are the two wingers that we should be looking at. Another mention, Nico Williams in the Spanish league. The level of quality is higher. It's the fact that Real Madrid look like they're going to go on and win another Champions League. And that guy's been absolutely fantastic over there. He really has. Jose from um, El Tel Cocorel and... Uh, Oh, man, I've been put on the spot here. I've forgotten the other talk and ball. That's it. Sorry, Jose and Colin. I've forgotten your um your channel name there. But Jose from Talk and Ball and Neltel Cockerell has um, 
as mentioned, this guy, and he mentioned him in Kate Stream yesterday. And the more you look at this guy, Nico Williams, he could be a great asset for Spurs. He really, really could. Again, someone who can produce a moment of magic, a wizard on the wing. Look at those three wingers. Personally, my two choices would be the two from Palace. Get one of them. Get both. I'm as happy as Larry. Bob's your uncle, you know what I mean? But get one in, I'll be chuffed. And I think one would make a huge difference on the wing in our team. But look, guys, comment your thoughts and opinions down below on Marcus Edwards. Do you think it would be a good signing? Do you think it's a gamble? Do you think it's a gamble that could work? Or do you think it's a gamble that will go tits up? I want to hear all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Now, next thing I want to talk about is not necessarily even a Tottenham transfer, but it could affect Tottenham in the long run. And that is Chelsea going out there and signing Tosin Adrobio, right? We all know, a majority of us football fans know the FFP troubles that Chelsea have. They've brought in a new manager. He's going to want to be going out there and signing new players. And one of the reasons that Pochettino left that club or was sacked, whatever way you want to read it or whatever way it happened, was because he wanted to keep homegrown talents such as Gallagher and Chalabar. And the owners didn't because they want to sell those players to make up for FFP. So, Tosin Adrobio going to Chelsea whilst... This transfer won't cost them a ridiculous amount. It shows that they're going to have to go out there, especially with a new manager and sign players for him. And if they're going to have to go out there and sign players and invest, they're going to need to sell Conor Gallagher. They're going to need to sell Trevor Chalipa. And Tottenham Hotspur have been reported for a couple of years now, in all honesty, to be interested in Conor Gallagher since he was at Crystal Palace. And I wouldn't be surprised if those rumours and reports really ramp up over the next few weeks. We're hearing a few mentions here and there at the minute, but the minute Chelsea do some more business, the minute we hear it, here we go for a 15 to 20 million signing or a 50 million signing, they're going to have to sell Gallagher. And I think Levy will pounce on that because I think the guy's, what, worth 50 million? Due to how much they're going to need to sell him, I wouldn't be surprised if you could get him for 30 to 35 million. In my opinion, he's more of a central midfielder, and I don't think that necessarily is a priority at the minute. I think we've got Rodrigo Bentancur, Papi Matsar, who can sort of play that box-to-box -box role occasionally. Basuma even who can play that box-to-box -box role, but I'm not a big fan of him. James Madison's, uh, Madison is an attacking mid. Down the line, I think we should be looking at players like that. And if we do sign three priority positions, in my opinion, number nine, a DM and a winger, we should. But... Right now, I want to see us go for a DM, I want to see us go for a winger, and I want to see us go for a number nine. Then look at other positions. And after the Timo Werner signing, I'm not filled with confidence, in all honesty, about this summer transfer window. If you want to hear my thoughts and opinions on that, check out the video I did earlier in the week that I got pelters for. And I did another video on that yesterday. But, yeah... Not necessarily a report that I'm bringing to you guys from a specific journalist about Gallagher. I'm just saying, keep tabs on the Gallagher situation. Watch this space, because Chelsea, the more business that they do, the players that they bring in, they're going to need to sell the likes of Gallagher and Chalaba. And with how much we've been linked with, especially Gallagher, not so much Chalaba, but I wouldn't be surprised if we were in the future. Don't be surprised if Spurs make a move for one of those two players, especially Conor Gallagher, you know. Right up Levy Street. And in my opinion, if we can get the other three signings through the door, I'm fairly happy with Kelly. Well, I think he's a really, really good player and he's done great for Chelsea. But I just don't think it's a priority position right now for Tottenham Hotspur. And look, you're looking at DMs, Paulinho, Kimmich. Those would be the two I'd be looking at. But another one, you know, I don't get annoyed necessarily with the fact that Tottenham Hotspur always go for cheaper options. I get annoyed with the fact that Tottenham Hotspur go for stupid options. You know? Daichi Kamada is out there right now on a free transfer. The Frankfurt attacking midfielder who's been proving it at the top level year after year. Who's 28 in the prime of his career. I don't care that that, that transfer doesn't cost money. Go out there and sign him. Because it's free. And then I'd actually say, even though it's not one of our priority positions, that's a good bit of business. But when we're looking at Anthony Martial on a free, when we're signing players like Timo Werner, just because they're, you know, just because they're cheaper, I'm not going to say it's a good bit of business because I don't think they'll benefit the club. So, look, this transfer window is going to be very interesting. There's a lot of lot of oh, sorry, a lot of lot of there's a lot of interesting um, players out there, free agents and things. So, I'd say keep tabs on the Gallagher situation and Marcus Edwards. Comment your thoughts down below on that. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that one go through 
over the next few weeks. You guys have been awesome. Take care of yourselves. Have a smashing rest of your weekend. And as always, Comedy Spurs, Ina can leave you out. In Big Ange, we trust.